CKM KFPL presents Today's matchup pits Erie Daly from the Hamburg Atlanteans versus Fierza from Team Reapout. And Erie Daly comes at us with Give a Sting, Shiver, Caprica, Reaver. This is a Mars Logos Dece house set that uses Dece to control the board state and what's happening on the boards. It uses Logos to get value engines for both your Amber and your card. Uh, advantage and then it uses Mars as its primary uh, win condition by b fueling a Martian generosity with three Gixel proliferators, two Mars firsts, a brainstem antenna, and locking your opponent down with Shatterstorm. This is basically a combo control deck that plays like no other. This is probably one of my favorite decks in the world um, and it's going to give a show I'm sure today. Here we see Fierza's deck, Opal La Dorata, which is a Logos Shadows Untamed deck that is using Logos to just get maximum value using Library Axis Phase Shift, three Sloppy Lab Works, three Mothers, uh, just going to push the tempo, where in Shadows they have like good Amber pullback with the Too Much to Protect Bait and Switch. It has Umbras for extra Amber Steel, Dusk Runner to put on the uh, Shadow Self, and it lights out to bounce creatures off the board. And then in Untamed you see the real engine with the Full Moon Nature's Call. Um, being able to use that to get max advantage off of your Taligas and your uh, Flaxias. So there's a lot of engines here that can go, and then he has a failsafe in the Witch of the Eye to bring back different parts of the combos that he needs as he goes forward. The key here is for Opal to get to its Amber generation as fast as it can and run through its deck before Giving Sting can set up its control and just end the game by putting it into a Shatterstorm lock. These are the keys to victory for both decks. Let's get ready to rumble! Coming out of the, wing for the uh, first player spot is Eerie Daily with seven cards drawn, Briggs combo in hand, Martian generosity looming. Um, looks like a strong opening hand. Um, for him. Um, maybe, maybe not. Maybe he uh, pushes, but I think that with the Wild Wormhold and Igor, he gets value. We look at Fierz's hand. It's very mid-game, mid-range mid game kind of play. He does take the mulligan right as I'm talking about it. He does redraw the Mother, which I was going to say was the one thing in his hand that was good, but he also draws into a Flaxia and a Niffle Queen, which, uh, and a Vigor. So he's going to have a, a, a three-point explosive start, but uh, we'll see where that takes him. Um, so we see that first turn for Eerie Daily, he discards the Bloodshard Imp, which is a solid play as he doesn't want to give up his creatures, but Fierza does respond with a Vigor, a Flaxia, and a Niffle Queen, and uh, generates three Amber and gets right up to it. So now we're going to see a Logos play from Eerie Daily. He plays the Igor as he goes digging for another Logos card maybe to play, or a piece of what he needs for a future turn, and... We'll see what he decides. He decides to grab a Titan Mechanic. So the Titan Mechanic will come into play. I assume he will play the Wild Wormhole, which he does, which draws him into a Collector Worm. Um, pretty solid hit there for uh, Eerie off of the Wild Wormhole. And he's going to pass it back over to Fierza, who is going to... Oh, it's a tricky hand. Like, what is he going to do here? He could go untamed go for value by reaping and stuff but nope instead he decides to take a gamble on the library access he's hoping to get the six here so he plays the mother does not draw another uh logos card then he plays the fogify does not lo draw another card in the sloppy lab work he does not draw another card so unfortunate for him um as the library access is, was a little bit dead um he only got to five amber he wasn't really able to be as effective as he wanted to be um, probably there, but um, still nonetheless, he did get to cycle through his cards a little bit and get the, get the game moving a bit. So turn three comes, and this is looking like a turn where um, I can see Eerie pulling the trigger on the Brig combo right here because there's a lot of value on the table where um, he can Brig double up to two, and then he can play the Graph, go to three, uh, play the sloppy lab work, go to four, reap five, six, and then he could ba basically pass over and take four more to go to 10 uh, against Fierza, um, which would be which would be a pretty solid push on Amber there. So we'll see what he decides to do, um, but that's probably the, the one line I can see here as far as uh, that goes, because he's not going to want to waste his uh, 
time on Mars yet because he has the thing and he can use the sloppy lab work to put the Mars Martian generosity into the archive and kind of just you know stall and save it so it's big so there's the brig so if yours goes to 10 he's gonna be giving up four amber to daily next turn um, and he does go up to three amber off of the interdimensional graft as expected um, here comes the sh the uh, sloppy lab work and there goes the Martian generosity and he does not reap with his two creatures why would that be oh because he's he's playing protectively against his too much to protect i bet so um heads up play there i wouldn't even have thought of that uh but there you go he's like miles ahead of everybody um eerie daily with the the protection of only giving up a couple of amber to the uh the too much to protect if it comes along um even though it was not there so uh, Fierza re replies back with a fight with the Niffle Queen to clear the Igor, and then he's going to reap with the Flaxia. Here he plays the Vigor to, to heal up his ape. Now the Nature's Call, which is going to hit both his creatures in the Flaxia, with a nice little pump-up spike right here. Pretty sweet. And then he can finish his turn off with the Taliga, which puts uh, Eerie Daily in a very awkward spot as Taliga is going to tax uh, Eerie for every creature he plays. So it's one Amber that goes towards Fierza. So playing one creature puts Fierza on check. So we'll see where Eerie Daily is going to take this turn as he goes forward. And with the eight to five, both people now have a key as uh, Eerie Daily was able to capitalize off of that interdimensional graft in a one for one trade for keys. But Fierza is right back on the doorstep, knocking on number two, and that's exactly where he wants to be. He wants to keep the speed and this uh, momentum going. Uh, there is uh, <laughs> Eerie stating his disdain for Taliga. She changes the game plan for him quite a bit. So he pulls his archive up, so he's going Mars. So he plays the the uh, Harvester, going to use the Mars first to ready up the Harvester and get a, a Hail Mary um, Martian Generosity. He does draw into some gas here just a little bit as uh, he's able to play a proliferator and use it with the Mars first but he does give uh, two Ember with the two creatures he's played back but he's also now at two and he can use the best Amber Denial card in the game in my opinion Shatterstorm where he pays those two Amber up to get rid of six Amber from Fierza that is a major setback for Fierza so the engine is starting to come online here, and he's going to have to deal some, find a way to deal with it. But um, we'll see what happens. That's a huge Hail Mary Martian generosity, and he hit pretty well. Probably as best as he could hit right there, honestly. Um, so well played, Eerie. Good line. Eerie Daly is one of my my favorite players to watch this whole tournament. He's been so so consistent. Him and Rodion were my two favorite people to watch play because they were just so consistent and, and methodical in the way they played their games. They both had great decks too. Um, Eerie is the, one of the only players that switched back and forth between two different decks. So um, he had a couple of games with this and he had a couple with his Mass Mutations deck that were all fun. But uh, here we see the Taliga in the in the double Niffle. So now we're going to see the Nature's Call come into play. It's going to bounce the... Uh, the Flaxia back to hand at least, and probably a Niffle, yep. And he redraws into the Flaxia. Look at that luck. That's uh, some pretty good, pretty good, pretty good juice right there as uh, we go in forward. From that point on, sorry if my uh, my mouth smack is being too loud. I'm not eating anything, I swear, but I do have diabetes, and my mouth gets very dry when I'm talking like this in concession. So. In consecutive manners but uh so he goes into Dece and he is now playing a wretched doll and debating where he wants to go here the taliga is still on the board which is absolutely terrifying to him i'm sure and he has a three fates but that wouldn't get to the taliga so now he has to make a decision of how much he wants to play and like how much he wants to put into this um, he does have a Dust Imp in there and an Unlocked Gateway. Uh, the Dust Imp would be a creature that comes into play when it dies. It's going to give you two Amber. And then it has an Unlocked Gateway, which will end his turn, but it will kill the Dust Imp and give him two Amber. Um, but he's trying to get his Amber count up. So 
we could see a couple like he could play the three fates and then play the dust imp and then play the play the soul snatcher and the exhume and play all that into one um one push and then just wipe everything with the with the um unlocked gateway could also just discard down like his uh the cards like the uh the tesmal and stuff in the anguish if you wanted to get them out of hand <clears throat> it'd be interesting to see where he goes there but there's the uh the soul snatcher coming into play and we do see the dust imp, uh, getting played on the dust imp and now we do see the exhume played for an amber and nothing else and then he does not pitch anything else he does keep the three fates and he does play the unlocked gateway which does pump him to four which is uh interesting he doesn't want to be too close to check i guess but uh he's saving to make sure that he has room to uh maneuver a little bit if there is another surge from uh fierza but unfortunately for fierza his hand is a little bit strapped and we see him going into uh shadows to basically try to move along some. So he plays the Umbra and decides to kill it with the Relentless Whispers to steal one, basically, um, away from Eerie. I don't know. On that turn, he could have also went with the t double mothers and just went for more value. But uh, I think he just wanted to get to check. So by playing the Relentless Whispers, he was able to make the two Amber needed to get himself to six. I think that's where his focus is instead of the value, the longer term value with the double mother. But either line, I think, would have been okay. But it's a little bit easier when you're on this side of the table just watching, right? So, <laughs> but we'll see what happens next. Sierra's so deck is not really uh, pumping out the gas like it normally would. So, there is a chance here that uh, Daly will be able to get into his. Uh, into his control lock and it'll be just game over at that point but uh we'll see if fierza gets to hold on to his six amber um right now it looks like he should as uh eerie has chosen to go into logos and he's going to play in igor and that igor is going to fetch him what did it get him it got him a brainstem antenna now the game gets gross now this is almost over Brainstem antenna, if that hits on a proliferator, one of the three proliferators, you might as well say goodnight because uh, he'll be in an infinite loop of every turn being able to start his turn with the Shatterstorm and end the turn with Mars, Martian Generosity, a Mars First, and a proliferator in his archive. So that is the loop that this deck creates that is uh, very hard to get past and one of the reasons why in the beginning I said it was one of my favorite decks in the world because it plays just a ton of value it's like a ridiculous amount of value right here look at look at this logos turn it was gross right he was able to basically play all these logos creatures which are kind of a threat Archimedes to protect that Igor to give him some dig uh, also on the side of the mechanic, so the mechanic is now in play. So there's the poison wave. It's going to wipe out most of this board instantly. Boom. See you later. But it also drops the key count to five, which is kind of dangerous and kind of cool. Um, but we'll see what happens. But there comes the pool from the, from the graveyard, and there you see it, folks. The proliferator, the Mars first, the brainstem antenna, and the Martian generosity. This is going to get gross because every time he plays a Martian creature now, that brainstem antenna is going to ready up that proliferator to let him pull a Mars card back to his uh, to his archive. So that's nuts. So there comes the first card he brings back is obviously Shatterstorm. Now he plays the worm to reap and get more amber to play into his Martian generosity, which he hits for 10 cards now. So as long as he hits one Martian, which he does, he gets to now put the Martian generosity back into his archive as well. And uh, just wreak value here as he plays the harvester and gets to reap the proliferator one more time. And, uh, this is the lock. This is the the the, the soft lock that uh, I was talking about at the beginning of the game, that uh, this deck can pull off. I've seen him do it before, and I'm pretty sure I'll see him do it again. Like this deck is so fun. This is Martian Generosity without the key abduction, folks. Just that the, this is what highlights the power of Martian Generosity. So. 
Pierre's are basically saying he's pretty sure that he can't win, but he's going to play it out because he wants to see. So I'm going to put some valuable time off the clock here trying to to weave a little bit and here comes that those mothers that are just a bit late like uh, they could have been out a couple turns ago maybe have swung a little bit more favor in his direction but uh, hard to tell you can't make that call now right like um, but the line he took was just as, as playable but you see now the mothers will be reduced in their effectiveness and like you see that in those last few cards he did draw up into some of that untamed power that he could have been using and that uh lights out that he could have been maybe stalling this combo a little bit but now the combo is online it's going to be really hard to uh, get rid of it and uh with eerie being the master of this uh of this deck i don't see him making a mistake in the execution of it so that's where the real uh, kick goes in. So Fierza is at two keys, but he'll never see Amber again, I think, on his turn. That, the Mars Firsts and the Proliferators, that's how you run Ganka. That's how you run uh, Martian Generosity, folks. If you want to be Tier 1 in that game, in that department, that is what you need. So you see this uh, this value, it's just straight value down for uh, Erie Daily as he's cycling the loop again. And this time he doesn't have to play the Shatterstorm even, like he can hold on to it and not have to worry about anything here as uh, he just going to put the March of Generosity back in hand, put another March First back in hand, like make sure that there's a, a, always a proliferator in hand, like there's no reason to play three, see? Um, yeah, this game's over. I can't see this uh, coming out well. I think that Eerie's deck is very well suited against uh, Fierza's deck. And the only chance Fierza really has is if uh, his deck comes out on gas. Like it has to come out just straight shooting fire right from the start. And then Eerie has to not have a way to slow that uh, that rush down. So Fierza is just thinking about his play here as... Uh, He's, he's starting to see the light, and that light is definitely the end of the road for this round. So this game is going on, went on at four o'clock in the morning for me. So I hit record and went back to sleep. <laughs> All right, so there's the concede from Fierza. So let's do a quick recap and we'll head on off to uh, round number two. And there you have it, Erie Daly pulling off the combo and generating total advantage with the Martian Generosity, making the most use out of his proliferators, brainstem antenna, and Mars first to empower his closing card, the Shatterstorm that... Uh, you saw come into play and once those are all online this deck basically puts you in game over mode that's how this deck closes games it basically denies all your ember and just generates enough to uh, get ahead on their, its own ember and just eventually win so there's a good example of it let's go ahead and head off to round two and see how fierza does piloting the deck so round two ding ding as the uh, fighters come out and are ready to duke out this round with Fierza on the ropes. Uh, Erie Daly taking round one and uh, we await to see what comes of round two. As you see, Erie Daly starts off with a Nature's Call, Taliga, and Niffle Ape in hand. Um, pretty solid with a Lights Out, Poison Wave, like good shadow stuff too. Like uh, could be interesting as uh, Fierza is on a big Logos turn and then he has one of each other card. So um, this could be the kind of start that Erie Daly is looking for, but let's see what he brings to the table here as a uh, guarantee his first play will be to play that Taliga because he knows how much of a headache it is. So let's see how Fierza tackles the Taliga. It looks like he is debating what he wants to do. As his tournament life is on the stakes but he does have the deck that won last round so 
Um, it's not over yet. So you see him play out the um, cutthroat research, the graft, and then he plays Archimedes with the ZYX researcher next to it and takes the card from the top of the library into the, uh, into the pit. So into the archive pit. So he is basically got a binite rupture there after he just discarded the uh, interdimensional craft. Pretty sad, um, but that's I guess part of the gamble that he has to take. And uh, we now wait on Erie Daily to make his move and do what he wants to do. It looks like Erie's is gonna go into shadows. He's gonna play lights out into a snack lifter into the Ring of Invisibility, and then a Poison Wave to tap it all off and push himself to four amber and clear the board of all the little stuff that was put out and still has a Taliga hanging out. Now it can't be hit, it's elusive. So Fierza looks like this turn will be a uh, cleanup as he plays the Dust Imp and plays Unlocked Gateway to just get rid of that Taliga because the Taliga is definitely a, a big hiccup in this deck. But uh, we do see his hand starting to get more speed with Logos there, and we do see the Brainstem Antenna waiting for a, a righteous target for it. So um, that's kind of scary as well, and we'll see what comes of it. Uh, we do see Eerie Daily pushes Amber Count to 7 uh, this turn and basically put the... Put the uh, the pressure on to Fierza to react. So Fierza now is using the Igor to dig a little bit. I'll see what he brings to his hand. He does protect it with the uh, Archimedes as well, so there's a chance for him to get the Igor back in the archive uh, and get another use out of it, which is a super solid play as far as uh, Logos goes with Igors and Archimedes. Just gets so much value off of those two cards together. So he looks like he takes Shockworm to his hand. Interesting. And then he's going to play Wild Wormhole, which hits a Blood Shard Imp. Ooh, that's not good. That's a discard card in this deck. So now he does play the ZYX and uh, uses it to archive more and then uh, he hits the Martian Generosity and a Mars first and he has a brainstem antenna so he's off to a good start here to uh, be moving along as he closes his turn out with that hex beyond but uh, he's got to be happy to see that uh, that play and so here comes uh, Eerie Daly who's going to play Library Axis plays a Fogify, draws a mother, plays a mother, draws a mother, plays a mother, a mother. So now he's got three mothers on the table to expand his uh, his round even more so that's a little bit better than uh, what Fierza got out of his library access last turn um, but still not as good as he probably would have liked it to be but he is at one key he did forge a key and he's back up to two amber with drawing three extra cards a turn now basically on top of the six that are in play so he's gonna at least get deep and you see his shadow's hand is actually pretty good um, he got a little bit deeper there but now uh, it looks like Fierza is making a decision he is taking his time thinking about what kind of lines could he have here? And he's deep in Mars in, in his hand. So um, it's a little bit tricky here to like how he's going to get the most value out of this. He does have five Amber, so that's a ton uh, of of cards to draw with the uh, Martian Generosity. That's at least 12. Um, and we'll see what kind of creative method he can come up with here to maximize his resources as he does have a little bit of a hiccup on the board. He has a Bloodshard Imp, which when you tap a creature, it dies. So he can't just recur with the Brain and Seven turn. He can't get that onto a Proliferator and just recur the Proliferation. So um, a potential line he has here, I guess, is he plays the Brain Stem Antenna as a uh, throwaway on the Bloodshard Imp, readies up the Imp and sacrifices the Imp, reaps with it and sacrifices it. So that way he gets one amber out of it and he kills the imp and he puts the brainstem back in his discard pile with the potential to get to a draw at that point, right? So he's already in on uh, going Mars, so he's all in on the, on the game plan. So there's the brainstem intent on the on the uh, on the imp for a strong play. Uh, you see the shockworm come and he gets to reap it and get rid of the blood shard imp so eerie giving him the uh, thumbs up as a solid play comes into play 
He knows that he knows that this is going to be huge. Um, so you see him get up to 80, spikes up to eight amber uh, right there, and that's going to be a 16 card draw, eight, nine, 18 card draw. Sorry, because he gets one for the Martian uh, generosity too. So huge draw right there um, for. Fiers, and you see all the Martian cards he pulled up too. So he is deep into this turn now, and he is going to start to put this uh, deck on rinse and repeat. And uh, I think this is the end for Erie. As long as Fierza sequences correctly, we should see this end pretty quickly with the same kind of combo that we saw last round, where he is going to uh, he can spike his Amber count to this round. He doesn't care if Eerie Daily does anything really. Uh, and all he's gonna do is load up his Amber, get to a number where he can get back to his Martian generosity with a couple of Amber, that's all he really needs. And uh, once he does that, he's basically, he's in, in business. So you see him just adding presents to the board. There's the proliferators, on one on each end. So we got book bookends, best friends. Um, and we're going to see the Mars first come into play now, and he's going to use the proliferator to uh, get that uh, Martian generosity back into the archive. So pretty solid play there. And uh, Erie Daly is sensing his defeat. He's talking to Fierza as they chatter back and forth. These guys know each other pretty well. They've played each other before, so. Basically, uh, Fierza saying that that uh, generosity was, uh, had to go for it, and he basically got there. That it was really good, because he did kind of risk a little bit, but not really, I mean, he drew so many cards. How much real risk is there, I guess? He still has a Shatterstorm in hand, so he's in good position to defend and uh, basically run up his score, right? Like run up his uh, card count. So it'd be interesting to see as uh, Flaxia hits the table, Lost in the Woods is gonna get rid of a couple of creatures. He'll probably work on things he can't kill. So he gets rid of one proliferator and a card, and then he fights the Nephilim into the other proliferator. So he does kill both proliferators, but the problem is, is that there's still Amber on the board. He's not threatening a third key, so like Fierza doesn't have to deny the Amber from Erie at this point. Um, so Fierza is going to probably just reap out here and uh, get value. He could even Shatterstorm first, but I don't even think he needs to. Like, why would he do that, right? So he pulls the Martian Generosity to his hand. So he can get one, two, three, four more Amber. So there's two, three, four is going to get six. Oh, no, he doesn't reap with the Collector Worm. So he takes exactly six. I guess this is, was a safety blanket for uh, making sure that uh, he didn't have an out. But I mean, he has the whole deck in his hand now, so this is pretty much game over. Like this is one of those times where it's like we're uh, we're on a cycle now. Like there's no way he's stopping three proliferators, two Mars, Mars firsts, uh, just infinite amounts of recursion on the Shatterstorm. Like there's no way. Yep, so there's the concede by uh, Erie Daily, and uh, we're going to go to chain bidding. So stick around as uh, we bring you a special presentation on how the bids went. So see you on the other side.
And it's game three, and we are excited as these two heavyweights put each other on the ropes. And the Martian generosity engine has yet to been answered, but Erie Daly has given up the, gener the Martian generation engine for a chance to beat it at its own game with seven chains. Seven chains is a pretty good number for that to go. So let's see how these guys are going to draw into their hands and see if uh, Opal can overcome the Martian generosity invasion that has been occurring. So we see the opening hand on Erie Daily side it does have a library access. It does have a, ooh, he got rid of it quick. He did not like it, even though it had a Flaxia and had some other things. I think he was trying for something a little bit more energetic and he ended up going into shadows more than uh, he probably likes. And then you see on the other side, uh, Fierza has quickly mulliganed as well and uh, doesn't look too great either as uh, Archimedes and Wormhole probably will be along the terms of the first turn plays here. But we'll see what happens as uh, first turn play is a Witch of the Eye to put some pressure onto the board immediately and to basically make him have to have answers for it, right? So Archimedes comes into play, plays the wild wormhole, ends up getting a fixed finger and sends it back over to Eerie Daly. As Eerie Daly looks at his hand, he has two Umbras, a Snecklifter, a Niffle Queen, a Vigor, and a Library Axis. So the Library Axis is kind of a chain in his hand right now. And uh, I think Fierza at this point is just trying to get through his chains and trying to see if he can get that engine online. Because if he gets the engine online, the changes don't matter. So... So here comes the shadows. Uh, you're seeing the snack lifter. You're seeing the two umbras. You're just seeing value get put to the board, but still no amber. And that is the thing that is going to put Erie a little bit behind here. Um, not a position that I think he wants to be in with this deck, but he does still have five chains to his advantage. So here comes some uh, here comes some display. Uh, we see the exhum. We see the dust imp get played. The wrecking or the uh, wretched doll is also in play now, uh, and we pass it back over to Erie Daly. Erie Daly finally draws a second Logos card for his library access, so he's starting to get there. I think this is a turn where he can go into uh, Untamed pretty happily and uh, start to generate a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, traction with uh, Amber as far as... Uh, well, he does chooses not to. He decides to take Amber instead by using Shadows. He plays the two Umbras, gets rid of the Archimedes, um, and plays a Shadow Self and a Snack Lifter. So he decides not to play those three cards and get some value on the board. He could have had three Vigors, basically. Um, that would have been three Amber plus the Reap for four. Could have been a little bit more ahead, I think. But uh, at the same time, he did deny the two Amber from the other side. So... Nothing wrong with that play, but those are the two different lines that you can take. And this is what makes Keyforge such an amazing game. So now you see Fierza coming back, and he's getting his Igor engine in play. And he is basically starting to uh, dig through his deck, looking for the cards he needs. And you do see the proliferator in hand. You see a worm. What else will come to the table? Who knows? We will see as we go. So he brings the three fates out. So the three fates is pretty big here as it's going to be able to get rid of that shadow self. And then the next biggest thing is, is that Witch of the Eye. So that Three Fates is definitely in play if uh, there's nothing that's going to come out. And there's not, like, I guess this is the time to play that Niffle Queen. But the Niffle Queen still can't guard against the Three Fates. And, obviously, and he's going to actually get more value because of that, um, which is going to be, it's kind of crazy. But Erie does pump up to six, and he does get to go up to seven with that play with the Vigor and the Witch of the Eye, so now Fierza is going to go right back into D's here and use that Three Fates to clear out those problem children that were uh, looming on him. Um, so there you go, he clears out a whole bunch of goodness. Now he has the, one of the Umbras goes down to the Dust Imp and, and swinging Amber his way. And then Tesmal makes an appearance uh, and a Wretched Doll token on an Umbra. So uh, Wretched Doll doesn't usually get a lot of play, but here it seems to have had a little bit of value. It might be good. So here we go on a Library Axis turn where he's going to play a Fogify, so there's no fighting next turn. Uh, he does play a Mother, and he still has a Phase Shift, which gives him at least two more cards here. Um, so he Phase Shifts. He's going to Phase Shift into a... Hmm. Good question here. Let's see what he does. 
he decides to use it to play a nerve blast and uh, he does get in, he does continue to get more sloppy lab work and uh, off of his archivist so he's he's got a pretty good chain here going I don't know how much longer it will keep up but it's doing pretty well so the question here is, is like what does the sloppy lap work he's going to put something away and he's going to discard that uh, bait and switch I would think because the bait and switch is pretty much dead at this point but I think he put it into the graveyard or into the archive what did he do with that I don't know I didn't see I don't see it in the graveyard here so I think he might have actually put it away and held on to it Or is he still deciding? Yeah, I think he's still deciding. Because I don't see the uh, sloppy lab work in the, in the pin yet either. Okay, so there we go. So that that is what it looks like happened. So we go back over to Fierza, where Fierza is now a little bit in trouble. Like Aziri is pushing that four amber cost and. It looks like this could go pretty pretty good for Erie if he keeps up that pace. But uh, we know that that Martian Generosity engine is just a couple of clicks away. And we'll see what happens if it gets there in time or not. So we see the uh, ZYX research, researcher doing some business and putting cards on top of the, uh, from the top of the deck into the uh, archives see some reaping so we see him at five and there he draws the martian generosity and he already has at least the proliferator in the archive i know that oh so the, here we go now we'll see if this if, if uh how this is going to end up now this is Erie's deck so Erie does know how to beat it his own deck but this could get to be pretty gruesome if uh he doesn't keep an eye out as uh he continues with the shadows trends here uh he's saving his uh untamed play for uh, a little bit bigger of a, a, a turn I think and he knows that that lost in the woods could be huge with the uh, proliferators and getting them off the board but if that cycle actually hits then the proliferators will be will be saved and pr basically put inside of the uh, the archive so it won't really even matter as far as that goes so now we see v Fierza taking a little bit of time to get his brain right and see if he wants to try to push for this win right now or if he'd rather maybe take an unlocked gateway um, and kind of add value to the game that way and take away some that way but he is at Erie is at eight amber so he's pushing for key number two and Fierza is still yet to go so Fiera is a little bit behind the eight ball here as Erie is continuing to keep that pressure on and so it looks like he is going to go the route of the unlocked gateway this turn as he does go to dis. I don't know what is in his archives at this point so I do not know if that was the correct move or not but there's the dust imp in the uh, unlocked gateway. Those two seem to come together all the time but he gets himself to five and he draws a brainstem antenna so that wait was well worth it because now we know there's a proliferator and we know that this is an engine is about to get trucking so we will see what happens on Erie's turn as he has a chance to uh, get to key three is at two amber so I think he pushes the count here he has to but we'll see what happens and if the shatter storm comes into play yet again so we are waiting on Erie daily so quickly he comes back he is going untamed so we're going to see the full moon here uh, and we're going to see see some cycling I think does not play the full moon. okay there's a full moon and he's going to play it so that uh, they go backwards and he doesn't have to put the cards back in his deck makes sense good play and he does get to seven he spikes to seven so this is make or break at this point he's basically saying Fierza you have to have it or you lose um, so Fierza is probably looking at this going man I have to go for it I have to get this online if I don't get this online I lose so there's the Mars play he draws his archive we see brainstem antenna we see proliferator we see Mars first we see a shockworm we see Martian generosity we see lots of value but he needs to hit the shatter storm off of this so here comes the moment of truth here so there's the brainstem antenna now the shockworm is going to give him one and then the, the Mars first will give him two so we'll see what happens here I think he has to get a couple more cards off of these to be somewhat uh, sensible get enough amber like he's going to be able to draw for a whole lot of cards here 
So the chance of him not hitting his uh, his shatter storm is probably zero at this point. Because there's six, seven is 14. If he plays the other one, that's 16 and 18. That would be 18 total. But I think he has to save the proliferator to uh, recycle cards. Um, depending how many creatures he draws, of course. But uh, interesting circumstance here. But Eerie, he has to draw the Shatterstorm. If he doesn't draw the Shatterstorm, Eerie's got him in the corner, and this is either a rope-a-dope or it's a knockout. Like there's a there's a a bit of tension here as as we go. It's like Jeopardy. You can play the music, folks. As uh, we have Harlan in the background drumming feet for me. But uh, tension is mounting. I think Fierza is a little bit uh, scared for his life <laughs> since he's on the ropes. But there it is. Oh, there's the Shatterstorm. He hits it. Um, and he does save the Mars, the uh, the Mars first to make sure that that generosity gets recycled. So there's life in this old dog yet as uh, we continue on this path of insanity. So he's going to basically be able to reap it, get the amber, um, get the Martian generosity back, get a couple amber, drop that seven down. Again, Shatterstorm showing why it's one of the best cards in the business when it comes to amber denial i love that card it is not fair it is pretty gross ever since they nerfed bait and switch it's easily been the best uh, amber denial card i think the old bait and switch was comparable like they were both pretty dang annoying but uh bait and switch gave you amber back so that was a bit better until they nerfed it and then once they nerfed it it was without a doubt shatterstorm the best in the business as you see here that one amber is going to turn into three. That's nuts. And then he still has way more amber to play. So it's time to start cycling and starting to play these cards out. Interesting. So he gets to two. That's going to be down to one amber. He's going to pull him down to one amber. Pretty nuts. And there's the reap. Mars first on the proliferator. The second proliferator. Gonna move the. What did he put back? Shatterstorm. Uh, Martian. No. So there's a Mars first. There's a couple Mars firsts in there. But he needs to get back to that Shatterstorm. So I'm hoping the generosity got put back into the archive. Didn't couldn't keep quite keep up with the text scroll here, so the tense the intensity is mounting here as a we are getting closer and closer to the end. But uh, this one is going a little bit long. We'll see what happens. As uh, these two guys are just duking it out.
so this long cycle here as Fierza is trying to contemplate what he wants to do. And now Eerie has to come up with a plan to combat this endless cycle of Mars onslaught. This is like Mars invasion here. And uh, we'll see what happens as uh, Eerie takes some time to think it over. You can cut the tension with a knife. As Eerie is just contemplating, like, what does he do here? How does he stop this? So he goes into Untamed, and he fights the proliferator to kill the proliferator, and then he uses a Nithil Ape to make sure that that Tesmo is dead. Um, and then he wastes a whole turn doing that, which is um, probably okay, honestly. Even though he did have uh, a lot more mother and sloppy lab work value in hand. Um, but now it's a little bit better because he was able to, I guess, rotate those cards out. But you, I guess you have to get rid of the proliferator. So I'm not questioning him. He is a top notch player. He has this figured out. He knows what he's trying to do. And I believe he's going to basically try to put fears on the ropes and uh, see if he can't figure out a way to break this uh, this hold that this Martian Generosity deck has on uh, on the game right now. So here's Fierza, and he's going to actually go Logos because there's no threat of a key, so he can dump his whole Logos hand right here and uh, get some pretty good value out of it. Uh, double Wormhole is, is kind of scary. Um, who knows what he'll hit with that, but it'll be interesting nonetheless. There's the Igor to take a peek. He wants to see what he's uh, getting into. He sees the shatter storm, it's like instantly going to his hand. It's like he's having a tough time thinking about it. That finite rupture is pretty much dead, he can just discard it. So he takes the ZZYX, which is probably good because now he can archive a card from the top of his deck. I don't think he wants the Archimedes, but I could be wrong. No, that's what he does, he just takes it to four and holds. Decides he doesn't want to risk the biscuit with the uh, two wormholes. Maybe the wise choice. So now we see the value play, and like uh, we get two mothers in play, he gets to draw a couple extra cards. You see him drawing into the uh, the too much to protect. That's a good card with the relentless whispers on the back side of it. So. That's a, that's a big play for him right here, as it's seen. Oh, there's the brainstem antenna. I see that much of it. I see the shatter storm under the brainstem antenna. So here we go, folks. Uh, Fierza is going to start to set up this loop and eventually it is going to uh, just wear out Eerie if uh, Eerie can't maintain Amber Presence and Amber Push on this. Which I don't know if he can. As, as we start to see the Mars invasion again, it's coming. Oh, look, he plays the brainstem antenna on the harvester. Oh. Interesting play. Know the amber value is what he's like looking to get out of this, but I wonder if not, maybe uh, keeping the proliferator in line would have been better, because he could have recycled all four of the cards, and uh, he could have put the March of Generosity back in, use that Mars first to uh, get the Shatterstorm back in play, like if he needed to later. Like he's kind of limit he limited himself a little bit there. Unless he, like, I don't know. Sometimes combos are weird. But he's kind of, he's kind of leaving himself open to, uh, to a counter punch here. So if he reaps with the Harvester, he will be at six for a key, and the Too Much to Protect can't stop it, but the Relentless Whispers could. So um, there could be value placed there on that. We do see the Taliga in hand as well, and the Nature's Call, and 
the nocturnal maneuver. So there's going to be some interference on the other side at some point. interesting to see where this is going to head but either way this game has been crazy as we've got to see one of the best decks in the world in my opinion going toe-to-toe -to -toe with people and uh win or lose this deck is uh amazing so, like uh regardless like uh what happens here like uh We'll see what comes of it. So Erie is trying to figure out how he's going to get past this wall of green. And if he doesn't find ways to keep fears in check, like it could go, it could go pretty long. Like it could go the distance. So we'll see. Like, uh, like fears could just put the gas at some point. Eventually, he'll figure out how to sequence it to make it beneficial to him, and then the game is pretty much over. But until that happens, uh, we're going to continue to see Eerie try to exploit the deck that he knows so well. So there's the Taliga. That's a good start. That's a that's a tough card. And um, then he uses the the uh, Nature's Call to turn off the Harvester because now the Harvester is next to a Logos creature, so he can't reap anymore with that. And that being on the Brainstem is actually pretty golden. And then you see the knockdown of the uh, the Dust Imp and the couple other creatures one in each house so there's just not a lot of value in on the board anymore here for him but uh you see fierza is going to go back in and he's going to go scoop up this uh this mars i think that might have been a, a premature scooping of the mars honestly like uh, i don't know if he because he only has two amber so going martian generosity right now would be kind of hard and uh he went into mars and I don't know if he forgot that the Harvester isn't turned off because it's next to the Logos card now. be an interesting question to ask him, but that seems like it could have been a, a bit of a hiccup. So we wait. Usually long waits after you start to make plays is a good sign that maybe you missed something. How many cards does he have left in his deck? Hmm. Interesting. Taking a, a Martian Generosity for six just seems weak compared to the 18 and the 16 and the uh, the monsters we've been seeing. But uh, we'll see what happens. The Fierza is, is thinking, trying to uh, figure out what is going to happen. Game's going long. Like ah, uh, this one has potential to go to time. It's it's been a longer longer sequence here. This third game. The other games are so fast that uh, it didn't really matter. Here goes Pierza, trying to uh, get the value again. He did take the Martian generosity and got lucky. Like he drew out. Well, I wouldn't say lucky. He drew out his. Uh, what he had left in his deck, I guess. Pretty close. So he had a good chance of hitting, because when you have three proliferators and two Mars firsts, it, it pretty much uh, gives you a pretty good chance to hit what you want to hit. So you see him keep a proliferator in hand. Uh, I wonder if that's just to keep it as a... Uh, oh, he couldn't play it, because if you played it, you gave it every six amber. I almost missed that. That would have been 
tragic right there. So Erie's back to five amber. Like he's pushing again to knock this game out, like to uh, try to win it. So it'll be interesting to see where he takes this. As he continues to make amber and draw amber. Harvester. See Erie just thinking out his turn, trying to uh, figure out his next step. One slip up here and he could just be in the hole, but uh, he has a chance, a puncher's chance. He's basically leaning in on Mike Tyson while Mike Tyson's taking those body shots to his uh, ribs. And we're trying to see if uh, he can withstand it. Played brilliantly against his own deck, which is uh, expected, I guess. But uh, this matchup is uh, a classic. These two decks have met before and they'll meet again, I'm sure. So we see a big shadows turn coming. That lights out is gonna hopefully be something that helps helps his cause. So now the Taliga has elusive, which is a uh, that's a big plus. So you see the too much to protect go out the window for the best. So he's up to eight amber and six. Uh, he only needs six to win. He's up to nine pushing he's trying to get there doing all he can to try to avoid the shatter storm that looms now here's the thing if Fierza goes here and like goes into Mars and basically uh, plays shatter storm on th with only three amber in his pool he can take out nine of that ten this is why Shatterstorm is gross. Like, uh, it just doesn't seem fair. It's an uphill fight. Crazy, it is. Crazy. So Fierza now pulls up. Shatterstorm in there? No, it's not. It's crazy that uh, Erie is being able to put so much pressure on him, and uh, there's still always an answer. Deck is just doing it gross. And there's Shatterstorm just sitting on top of the pile again. So bam, he hits it. We're going fishing. We catch all the whales. We'll see what he does now. And like how he plays this next, the rest of this turn as uh, sequencing must commence. There's the proliferator. Going to be followed by a Mars first, I'm supposing. There's the Mars first. There's the proliferator. There goes the Martian generosity. Back into the pile. So now he's just making a ton of amber. Like he should shatter storm and knock that amber down now. He is wasted a couple of amber there that he didn't need to. But uh, either way, they're both at zero. Now the Taliga is in play. 
I guess that was what his idea was, was to get the most value off of the uh, countering the Taliga and making sure he gets the Amber off of the uh, plays there, but uh, can't go sub-zero. So when your Amber is right to his Amber, it's like the right time to uh, pull the trigger. So again, you see the two um, the two proliferators hanging out on the wings and then the one in the hole just in case something happens. So we continue on this path, this journey of uh, discovery. You can discover how oppressive Martian generosity can be. Like, where's the brainstem antenna? Oh, it's still on the 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 uh, harvester. So that's kind of been a that's been kind of a a dead card. Like he he killed two cards at one stone by clearing out that uh, harvester and making him not be able to reap. So that thing is just stuck there. Can't even use it. And he's holding the brainstem antenna, which is a key card. It slows a lot of things down here. But the problem is, is there's still two Mars Firsts, and there's three proliferators, so, I mean, instead of it being easy street, it's pretty easy street, so, like, is there, how big of a difference is that? But we see Eerie Daily fight his way back up to six Amber again. Like, uh, this guy just won't go away. Keeping those body shots close. Oh, there's the Mars first again. See the generosity looming behind the uh, Mars first. So now it's a matter of uh, get enough amber to get that. Oh, that Shatterstorm back into his hand. There it goes. Shatterstorm is back in hand. Nuts. It's crazy. Crazy, I tell you. I mean, the lock is pretty much on at this point. Like, there's uh, not a whole lot Eerie's going to be able to do, except hope that he gets to time. Um, and there's still a lot of time left. And then Fierza, at some point, is going to turn the corner and start uh, being oppressive to the point of which, like... Eerie won't have an answer because uh, so far he's had an answer the whole way. Like he's been keeping his ambers come back and stuff, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens as uh, Fierza puts him back in the corner. Here he's been rope a doping and pushing him, pushing his way back out. But uh, at some point, the energy will go. So we'll see what happens here as this game comes to a close. I feel like I'm in the Amazon right now, or uh, the outback getting constricted uh, as I, I, I feel Eerie's energy just slowly draining as this game drags on. But the power of this deck is so high, such a good deck. It is absolutely bonkers. The value town that's going down right now. It's crazy. And we continue to see Eerie punch back as he gets right back to six. Like he's getting there. He's getting it done. Trying to stop this uh this madness. But the Martians just keep coming. They have a way about them.
the silence because I got nothing left to say. It's the same thing over and over again. We are in Groundhog Day at this point. <laughs> Eerie makes a bunch of amber. Fears it takes it all away. It's like a Linkin Park song or something. This is suffocation at its finest. Just chugging along here. Look at it go. There's a certain amount of insanity that goes into this. Harry Daly trying to just figure out how does he get out of this? How does he make this stop? Now there's three proliferators on the board, so he has to get rid of all three of them to have a chance here. Only way he can do that is if he goes into logos. If it goes into logos, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting. See me telling them that there's only 16 minutes left. Here he does have some decisions to make here, though. I don't think he's slow playing at all. He's uh, basically looking at his hand trying to figure out like how does he maintain the momentum that he's that he needs to get away from this like to how does he get like the mars cards basically out of the way the problem is is that he has like all of his logos and all of his uh discs in hand just about so like uh there's not a lot of room for anything other than mars to come out So here comes the two Umbras. He's taking a turn down, I guess, to uh, to get some value. As he does use the bait and switch to get one Amber back, he does throw out the Poison Wave. Because he doesn't want to lose his Umbras, I guess. Doesn't want to give two more Amber off of the Dust Imp either. So I guess I get it. All right, Fierza, going into Dees. Put an end to this game now. He should be able to if he uh, navigates this correctly and just gets rid of everything that he needs to. Looks like that's the game plan. Just wear it down now and uh, get his own amber up. Harlan is excited. He is like throwing a party over here. This game looks like it's now starting to wrap up as uh, multiple threats are coming online. So he did bury his proliferator. Just, I, just, I just realized that he had uh, covered his own proliferator. Harlan! Sorry about my son. Autistic stimming is uh, sometimes very aggressive. And getting this out to you in a timely manner is hard because it takes a, long, a little while to put it all together, especially with some of the new things I've been doing. And uh, it's basically I have to watch this game two or three times to uh, get it all together. So you can imagine it takes a couple hours per video. Still having to deal with him, so... This game has been like, I think the uh, 
I think the Anaconda is finally winning. I think the stranglehold is in, the fix is in. Now part of the issue here too though is I think he's diluting his his draw now. So it's not as going to be as uh, efficient, but I guess in the end it doesn't matter because he's got his first key. Erie is not on his sec his third key, so he's got a whole other turn to do what he wants to do. Harlan, Jupiter. So 14 minutes left. Here comes the, here comes the monster draw again with the, the Martian Generosity. And here comes the Martian Generosity back to its safe spot. So there's pretty much no cards left in the deck at this point. Now it's just a loop of trying to make sure that he can get all the amber he can get to uh, make his keys and still stop his opponent. So it becomes like, how efficient are you at how you reap and how you get the value out of these creatures, right? But he still has two Mars firsts, so he's still gonna put the Martian Generosity and the Shatterstorm back every turn. Um, so they're not going anywhere. And then like, uh, since the Shatterstorm and the Martian Generosity are there, he can just put away a Mars first as well, just to be super safe. And, uh, you know, make sure that he's going in the direction he wants to go. So there he goes to six again. So now Fierza is threatening six again with uh, Eerie back at zero. Time is running out. The second key is pretty much going to be game over if it goes to time, I think. Because Fierza can always end his turn on a... Uh, Eerie zero him on some kind of amber. So it does not bode well for Eerie here, as it seems like the road to a Hamburg final is going to come to an end. I don't want to speak prematurely because I've seen him pull things out that uh, I never saw coming, but in this case. This game was definitely worth getting up for at 4 o'clock in the morning. At least they made it uh, entertaining and long. <laughs> so much for the quick one so I could go back to bed. Harlan! So there's, there's a push back up by Fierza again. So maybe this. Harlan. Harlan Jupiter. So this game is coming up in coming to an end soon as uh, two keys to two keys and Martian generosity is in full swing and this engine is going to finally end it. Fierza has navigated himself out of this uh, predicament as Eri did his best uh, Muhammad Ali and uh, tried to rope a dope and 
stay alive and, and, and try to find that counter punch, but he just could never get to the full punch as uh, the Martian Generosity engine has again just been stifling to the opponent as uh, this game is wrapping up quickly and we will be seeing seeing the end come soon. So there goes all everything that was on the board for Erie and he's at zero amber again and uh, it's got to be frustrating to be able to burst that much amber and just have it all taken away by a card called Shatterstorm. If you want to know how powerful the card is, well, this deck tells you exactly what I've been saying since day one in Coda when I thought that it was the best Amber Denial. Bait and Switch is still limited to the amount, even in the old Bait and Switch version, like you were still limited to the amount of Amber your opponent was under or above you. So like it kind of balanced everything out with it. This is just straight oppressive. Harlan Jupiter! So there we go, there's the concede, the game is over. Fierza has won and will be heading to the top four representing Team Reapout um, from Australia. So congratulations, Fierza, wonderfully played. Eerie, amazing job, um, was a pleasure to watch you in the league. And we'll see you both uh, next season as well. So, so there you have it. Uh, thank you so much for both Erie Daly, who is a wonderful competitor, and congratulations to Fierza for winning and representing his team, reapout.com. Go check them out.